I read that Hackaday is running a Cyberdeck design contest up until October, and it's something I've always wanted to build just for fun. Since mechanical stuff and 3D design is not really my forte, I'm gonna turn to my friend Jay and see if he wants to do a collaboration. Hey Jay, how's it going? Uh, good on my end, how are you? Yeah, doing pretty well. Did you hear about Hackaday? They are running a Cyberdeck build challenge in, I guess, August and September. Did you see that? Oh, I did see that. I did. So I've actually been kind of wanting to build my own, and I feel like I don't have the mechanical expertise, but I know you and was wondering if you were interested in collaborating on building a Cyberdeck together. Ooh, a collaboration. We haven't done one of those in a while. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I think I would be de definitely interested. With your programming skills and my mechanical skills, we could make a very powerful cyber deck. Oh, I'm excited. Okay, so looking through the Hackaday rules here, we can't win because we're, you know, both being employed or paid by DigiKey, but I think it would be super fun to do, both for a video, for your social media, and for anybody who's curious, a cyber deck comes from the 1984 novel Neuromancer, where... William Gibson makes up this term. To, I guess it's kind of like a laptop, because in 1984, we, yeah. we kind of had the beginnings of laptops, but they were more like these chunky desktop things that you like lugged around. Can you describe, like in your mind, what is a cyber deck? A cyber deck is a custom laptop. That's how I see a cyber deck. It's a custom laptop you put together yourself, you decorate, make pretty, they have different retro styles, and most people usually program them to be able to do maybe one or a few specific things. I think ours, uh, I think the one that I would definitely want is to help with the programming skills type of stuff. Because as, as long as I can use it to plug up to one of my robots to like, you know, force feed some information, maybe that could be useful. Agreed. But that's how I do it. <laughs> Agreed. I think that would be really cool. Okay. So it sounds like we should have something on there, like a basic operating system, say Linux, that would help us with that general programming. That way you could run Arduino, Python, or whatever else you need. Um, yeah. It should be powerful enough for those and to like upload programs to your robots. Um, you know, I, I think Raspberry Pis are kind of the go-to for a lot of these cyber decks. The, few, the number of builds I've seen where people are using Raspberry Pi. So it'd be fun to do something else, but you know, for the sake of keeping this simple and to focus on that use case of helping you debug and program your robots, I say we go with a Pi. I know they're hard to obtain, but surely we've got a couple lying around. I got a few lying around somewhere around here. <laughs> and yeah. for, porta for portability, I think I've got like, look, I've got like a Pi Zero ready to go here. We could just use one of these. I mean, they're not as powerful, but it should accomplish the purpose of helping you debug and, and program, right? Yeah. I mean, as long as it can help me do those small things, I'm 100% okay with this. Yeah, it's not going to be running video games, but... or, or streaming videos but what do we care we just need to run some command line stuff video games nowadays this is <laughs> 2022 we don't have time to sit around and go into a virtual world to pretend to be someone else that i'm not i don't have the oh. time anymore i love my virtual worlds but you know i don't have much time either <laughs> too I busy mean, making to be fair my last time going to virtual was fallout and i was kind of depressed after that because it was like hey i survived the nuclear apocalypse but you know <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to survive the nuclear apocalypse. This is not the future we want. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was nice, but... Well, well, that, I mean, so now we're going to make a cyber deck, which comes from cyberpunk, which is, I don't know if we want that future either. So, okay, most cyber decks I've seen pictures of are in that cyberpunk style, right? Where you've yeah. got, like, the chunky mechanical keyboard... Um, you know, matrix-like yeah, GUI or maybe like really simple command line on an LCD with this like, it's like a chunky boxy thing. And I think that was kind of Gibson's original intent because at the early 1980s, these, these early prototype laptops, that's kind of what they were. They were like these portable yeah. desktops with these chunky keyboards and, and monitors. I have some ideas. Um, I'm probably going to have to sketch them out before I can fully articulate them. But I could definitely see something like that happening, especially if I... Because the top of my head right now is like, if I make the bottom square have a little extended point just for the Raspberry Pi, I can have this really nice type of, I have to draw it out. You'll be able to see it. Okay, okay. <laughs> so next next time we meet, we can show off the, the diagrams. And then in the meantime, let's find parts 
order the same parts and I'll start hooking stuff up to make sure it works and I can work with you to get dimensions. So yeah, then you then can I'm start. Like... Yeah, right, start doing the thing. Yep, perfect. Yep. So, so the plan. First up is to unpack all of the parts. It's honestly like Christmas. Whenever I get a box from DigiKey, this is the fun part. This keyboard comes from Adafruit originally, but DigiKey does sell it, and it's a little awkward to type on, but it works. Next is the Capacitive Touch 7-inch LCD screen from Seed Studio. This thing is gorgeous. It is really nice looking, and it's got some ports on the back that let me connect HDMI as well as use USB ports. From there, I want to lay everything out and make sure that it all fits together. Using this, some rulers, and a set of calipers, I want to diagram out where all of the components need to go so that I can provide this diagram to Jay when he goes to produce the case. He's going to use this to determine where the mounting holes need to be so that all the electronics fit. Now you want to do it in such a way that you don't have a lot of cable overlap or crossings so that you can use appropriately sized cables and keep the amount of volume necessary inside of the case pretty small or as small as possible. From here I've got my diagram and I'm going to send this over to Jay to start producing the case. While he's doing that, I'm going to solder up the electronics. First up is the uninterruptible power supply. This is going to act as my battery charger and convert LiPo battery to 5 volts and it's all going to be controlled with this switch. Now the switch has a cute LED on it, so I'm going to solder in a resistor and of course use heat shrink tubing to keep everything nice and safe. And I had to desolder a few parts so that the battery could actually be connected to this board. And with the switch working, I can now provide 5 volts to all my other electronics. This includes the USB hub so that it doesn't need to draw power entirely from the Raspberry Pi Zero. I also want to use an external antenna with my Raspberry Pi Zero since it will be inside of an enclosure. This required soldering on a UFL connector, which was a bit of a pain. It's not my best soldering job, but hey, it should get the job done. With that, I want to connect everything up and make sure it works before telling Jay that he can go ahead and finalize the design. With everything connected, let's throw the switch, and sure enough, it's alive. I'm using basic Raspberry Pi OS just as a test for now, but you can feel free to put any operating system you want on here. It doesn't need to have a GUI, but you know, maybe I'll move to like Kali Linux or something as long as it runs on this Raspberry Pi Zero. Using the sketch I provided, Jay mocked up this design in Fusion 360. The idea is to create a laptop style cyber deck and you can see a port on the far right here where the cables are run for the monitor as well as the keyboard. Now we're using duct tape because the lid does not stay open by itself and this is just a prototype. In version 2 we're going to add some torque hinges so that it will stay open by itself and Jay fired up Raspberry Pi OS just to test things out and with that we have a fully functioning cyber deck. Obviously this is a first iteration or prototype just to see if Jay and I could get something together that worked like a cyber deck. There's a lot more we want to do with this but that will have to be saved for a future project and video. I hope this helps you get started creating your own cyber deck and understanding what pieces you need to put together and maybe some things you need to consider. We really want to see what fun things you build. So if you build your own cyber deck, please post it and tag us at Maker.io and at DigiKey. With that, happy hacking.